Hello there guys, what is going on? Son of Chelsea, back here again for another episode of Let's Talk Chelsea. Hope you're all doing well and keeping safe and sane regarding the world of Chelsea Football Club at the moment. It is kind of deadline day, isn't it, for the ownership, for who is going to be taking over from Roman Abramovich, who's going to buy the club. Uh, Rain, as we'll get into uh, the investment bank, who of course have kind of overseen this. Uh, final bid, 9pm tonight, UK time. It's a big day for Chelsea Football Club. I don't know how much clarity we're going to get over who is going to progress as we'll get into some of the great reporting from the likes of Matt Law and Nazar Kinsella and the amount of potential billionaires as it is who could be taking over um, in the coming weeks. But I hope that today can mark sort of a bridge to a more optimistic future for Chelsea in the sense that the last three weeks have been very difficult and just been mental, really. I remember making my video the day after, the morning after Roman announced he was going to sell Chelsea. We kind of felt that was going to be the seismic event. And then a week later, wasn't it, um, just over that, the UK government sanctions on Abramovich freezing basically the asset of Chelsea. All the mental stuff that's happened since then. So hopefully we can start to be a little bit more positive. So I want to get into that, all of the noise and all of the potential people who could be owning Chelsea, the fan involvement, all of that stuff and all the reporting I've seen. I want to start off though with the Champions League draw because that happened earlier today. And my reaction to it is I predicted this. is. Not, I'm not saying this in hindsight. I genuinely predicted this before the draw when I was watching it earlier with my dad and we were kind of thinking about who was going to get it um who we were going to get in the draw you know who's the best team to avoid what who do we want I kind of felt like Madrid were kind of Real were kind of that bridge between kind of a compromise it wasn't the perfect draw it wasn't Benfica or Villarreal you know think, think back this time last year we avoided all the big sort of guns in that in that draw and we got Porto which obviously I think was the most favorable at the time as it proved as we beat them um and I was kind of thinking that obviously I didn't really want to face the trio of Liverpool, Bayern or Man City, especially Liverpool and Man City. So Real Madrid kind of offered that counter counterbalance because we've beaten them before with a fairly similar squad. They are slightly different this year in the sense, obviously, new manager Carlo Ancelotti, someone Chelsea fans think very fondly of. Um, Benzema is obviously having the best season of his career, arguably. I mean, that second half performance against PSG was incredible. It really was. Vinicius Jr., who really struggled against Chelsea um, in the semi-final last year, really struggled to make an impact. Another player that's really come into his own this year. And yet, of course, you've got class and experience, you know, Kroos, Modric, uh, Casemiro. You look across that team, even though I don't like him, Thibaut Courtois in goal, across that team and you think there are obviously players that can hurt you. But I feel that Tuchel will look at this game a bit like last year, see the flaws in Madrid that he exposed last time, the strengths we have, I, I guess the big sort of thing that we're going to have to counteract with this game is on the left side of defence, which has been a problem since November. With no Ben Chirwell, we'll hopefully have Reese James on the other side. What is going to be the solution uh, for Thomas Tuchel on that? I I wouldn't be overly stunned if we see Cesar Azpilicueta as a left wing back. That's an early shout for me tactically. I think he did it in both legs last time. Reese, I don't think, started either of the Madrid games and then, of course, started the final against Man City. I just wonder whether he'll say to Dave, you're going to be the left wing back or Reese is the left wing back. I think Dave will absolutely be starting this game somewhere. Um, and I wonder if that's going to be the solution because obviously there is that fear out wide of, of Chelsea being done. But listen, as Thomas Tuchel said himself, you know, Chelsea are European and world champions. We've got to the last eight again. You see the, the path beyond this tie. And I think it's great that we've seen some reports that apparently... The, the order, because we were going to play at home first, it may actually be switched because two Madrid sides can't play on the same night. So we actually may be playing Madrid away first at the Bernabeu. Wonderful to see Chelsea playing at the Bernabeu. It's such a shame we weren't there last year. Of course, the support situation very much links into the, the ownership, the sanctions. Can fans actually go to this game? Because it's not that far away. Um, and they're obviously going to have to start selling tickets soon. So we'll have to see on that one. But um, I, it's a glamour tie. And I just feel I look at the form of, say, Christian Pulisic, who obviously had a great second, well, first and second leg against Madrid last year. I look at the form of Kai Havertz, who was brilliant in the second leg last year. Uh, Mason Mount is coming into a bit of form. If we can get Kante and Jorginho and even Kovacic, who wasn't really a heavily involved player once we got to the latter stages of the Champions League. You know, just the former players, if they can cultivate that sort of mentality again that we've seen in recent weeks, rise the level of performance. 
you think about the semi-final, Atletico versus Man City, that's the other side of say it's the same half of the draw. Um, it's interesting. I think Simeone versus Guardiola is a really interesting tactical battle. I actually think it's the most interesting of the ties because... Simeone, once he gets to this stage of the competition, you know, he's done it to Guardiola before at Bayern, a really good Bayern side. I, I think he'll relish this kind of that dogged mentality, obviously, of Atletico Madrid. And it's just so curious, isn't it, that the teams we're facing um, be, from the last day onwards are the teams uh, we faced last year, you know, obviously facing Real Madrid. This time we would be in the semi final, either we face who we beat in the, in the final in Man City or, of course, the last 16 Atletico Madrid to get to the final, where one would assume it's going to be either Liverpool or, Man, um, or, Liverpool or Bayern, sorry, because I think that's the most likely semi-final. So I'm excited about it. I'm excited to see what happens post the international break once we get into that quarter final. But let's move on now. I have to open up my notes because it's there's so much information, obviously, about the ownership. I feel that two of the reporters um, that I think have been doing a lot of great work is uh, Matt Law, he wrote a really good piece, kind of a great, I think like what Matt Law's work does pretty well. And if you listen to him on London is Blue Pod, which is another great podcast that he goes on to pretty regularly, kind of being able to summarize things and kind of give you an overview of things in, in a really good way, because there's just so much noise, so many individuals and consortiums and people and companies coming out and claiming they're going to try and buy Chelsea. And of course, for a fan, it's, it's very hard to sort of distinguish how legitimate these noises are is it just bravado is it the likes of conor mcgregor maybe trying to increase his profile and trying to do something silly and there's no actual weight behind it these are serious things for chelsea you know we want the clarity of the club sorted um not only for us as fans on you know our mindset our sort of mental health at the moment you know and being able to support the club and feel like it's going in a good direction and on a, on a safe ground again for the employees obviously um who you know rely on income from chelsea football club it's, it's so massive so this piece last night um, kind of, of course, set out the 9pm deadline tonight, um, submitting offers, the pressure building, and Matt Law kind of goes through some of the key players within this. I think a lot of us know the name now of Todd Bowley, um, who is running a consortium. As it emerged, this is what Matt Law wrote yesterday, the part owner of the LA Dodgers would appoint Chelsea fans, uh, Danny Finkelstein and Barbara Sharon as non-executive board directors if his offer is successful. The move would ensure support representation on the board and Finkelstein who was on the panel for the government's fan-led review of football chaired by Tracy Crouch as an independent member. Uh, Chelsea Supporters Trust have made it clear that they want the club's next owners to incorporate the relevant recommendations of the fan-led review including a golden share for supporters, the creation of a shadow board and continued support for the Chelsea women's team. I want to move over to now, as you see on the thumbnail, John Terry. This came out this morning from Nazar Kinsella from Goal. John Terry led True Blue Consortium attempts to secure 10% stake in Chelsea for £250 million. With Terry having delved into the world of NFTs recently, the bid promises a high-tech approach allowing supporters, players and former staff to buy fan tokens for upwards of £100 in exchange for voting rights. However, Nazar Kinsella says they won't be able to fund a full bid, so must insert themselves into the wider deal involving UK, US or Saudi billionaires. Going through some others now, we have the Ricketts family who own a Major League Baseball team. The Chicago Cubs um, have been linked up with hedge fund leader Ken Griffin to make an offer. Woody Johnson, who owns the uh, New York Jets. There's been offers, uh, of course, from the UK, uh, FL Partners, a financial institution in London. Other names like Nick Candy, who's a Chelsea fan himself, who's apparently linked up with Gianluca Violi, is, is trying to find funds to, to submit a bid. And then we have Saudi Media. Now, there are others. Um, I think those are, say, not an expert, and I might be proven wrong. As a lot of people have said to me, people I respect, this, you know, the, the person who actually owns Chelsea in the end may be none of these people. As has been the case in the past, you know, when you think back to 2003 when Roman took over Chelsea, no one really saw that coming. A lot of these deals happen out of nowhere, but maybe because of the increased speed of this, um, I was speaking to Alan Smith, who is the chief football writer at Football London, go over to the Carefree Chelsea channel. We, I spoke to him, asked him questions of kind of how quickly this is going to be done. And maybe because it's happening so quickly, it is happening out in public a little bit more than it would say in normal circumstances. A lot of names, I know a lot of people, particularly on the Saudi media front, are excited because they see the wealth and they see, let's say, Man City, the wealth at Newcastle, and have kind of attached themselves to that. I'm going to be completely honest, um, that is not my favoured bid. And I understand, you know, in terms of, it. Let's, let's all just be blunt about this. It's the fact that 
you, when you think about Saudi and what they could invest in Chelsea, people think it would just be a continuation of the Abramovich era. But I also think of the women's team, um, Magdalena Eriksson and Penel Harder. And there was a brilliant tweet that I put, put up on screen now of some of the moral and human rights part of this that I think is absolutely needs to be discussed and needs to be addressed and can't just be uh, swept under the rug and just moved on. Uh, I think those are very ethical concerns and what Chelsea supporters want their club to be. This is a great opportunity as I'll get to now with the Chelsea supporters trust for a different kind of ownership, a fan led or much more fan involvement in the ownership as the Chelsea supporters trust to which I'm an affiliate member of. If you haven't and I urge you, link down below, if you haven't become a member of the Chelsea Supporters Trust, £5 for the basic membership. There are different tiers. I'm an affiliate member with Son of Chelsea, have been since uh, January 2020. Um, gets you involved in the meetings, gets you to have a say. It's really important because they are very much leading the charge with the proposals of the Golden Share. The Golden Share would basically, it, it's, a, it's kind of, at least the way I took it, was it's kind of an extension of what the Chelsea pitch owners, a share of the Chelsea pitch owners right there, signed by Ben Chilwell. That's another thing you should get to protect Stamford Bridge. It's a protecting what Chelsea is as a local West London club, plays in a blue shirt, blue shorts and white socks, um, stays in Stamford Bridge, stays in West London. These are things that we want to keep around Chelsea. That's what makes Chelsea, Chelsea the badge. Not changing the colour of the home shirt as we've seen in the past with other owners, uh, especially I think Cardiff is the best example we've had in a Premier League context. The MK Don situation of trying to rip Chelsea out as a franchise and trying to move it elsewhere. Th these are very important things and it, and it keeps the, the foundation of what the club is. And I think that th these are the conversations that need to be had. I do think you need to be cynical about a lot of the fan populism I think we've seen and this is across a number of people who've come forward um, you need to be cynical about that and there needs to be actual action I would say based on what I've read accounts because I, I I do sway towards I think American ownership is most likely I'm not saying it's going to happen because I'm not in these rooms but I would say it seems most likely I think Todd Bowley his consortium for me from what I've seen is a preferred bidder I think the work he's done with the LA Dodgers and people who obviously know a lot more about American sport than me and particularly listening to several interviews with him about what he brought to the LA Dodgers about winning recently. He's invested a lot in, uh, I think, either buying a player or securing a player. I think London is blue pod knows more about this than me, um, which shows after a lot of success, he's willing to invest more, which is obviously something Tuckle was referring to in his press conference earlier today, you know, an owner who wants to win. Um, and he said as well, he said the words, you know, when you're in L.A., you have to win. And, you know, you could very much chain, take out L.A., put Chelsea in there. Um, and I think he's a competent person. I think he's someone that quite clearly has thought about buying Chelsea for a long time. You go back to 2019 when he bid for Chelsea. This is someone who's wanted to buy this club. I don't think when I listen to him speak, because there are good interviews out there, that this is someone who's just rushed on instinct. Um, he's quite clearly got a track record of co-owning and being involved with successful sports teams which I think is something you want and someone who will delegate and hopefully implement that kind of sporting structure that we've maybe lacked in recent years a director of football um, especially on the transfer side which I know a lot of people are kind of frustrated about something we've isn't quite relevant at the moment because you're thinking about just the safety of the club and there are obviously more cultural things that we care about with a new owner but at the same time, those I think those things are relevant if ch people want Chelsea to remain competitive, keep Thomas Tuchel on board, buy the sort of players we want to. That it isn't the only thing that matters. I think as we've seen in recent weeks, there's a lot more things that matter in, in terms of what a football club means, what it means to its community. But, you know, these things are relevant and they are absolutely relevant to every football club in, in the modern game. Um, and I just think Bowley with the people he's got in, involved with it. As I say, it can all be PR, it can all be niceties. And then when we actually get to the table, um, those words aren't followed with action. But I do think for me, a non-negotiable is is a golden share, is a shadow board, is more fan representation, whether that is, as JT has brought up himself, some sort of stake for Chelsea. I'm not quite sure about NFTs, mainly because I don't know about them. And I just don't know what tangible effect they give to, to supporters. Um, I think it's more about that in-person kind of thing. I'd love to see... Uh, a spring and autumn each year meeting of some kind with the owners and the fans like we've seen with Arsenal in the past um, I know those things can get quite toxic but just a change of the way your ownership is because for me at the moment I don't want to experience the past three weeks again 
Um, I don't want in five years time we get an ownership who instantly plow in money, instantly keep Chelsea competitive. Sure, we maybe win a Premier League title, but in five years we have a very similar situation where our owner gets sanctioned um, and for a few weeks, even the fault for a couple of days, Chelsea could go extinct. None of us want to experience this again, this feeling of, of fear. And not only people who are connected to the club, like myself, my job is reporting and, and writing about the club at the moment and making videos on this YouTube channel. It's it's also about the long-term sustainability of what Chelsea is and also the kind of owners I'd want to, to take over Chelsea. I think there's, there should be an excitement about that. And I just think Bowley, with the people he's got involved and in his experience, and compared to the other American owners, the stuff heard about the Ricketts, obviously the leaked emails, the fact that Chelsea, I think it's the Ricketts or at least one of the owners that has been linked to those leaked emails. I don't want to sort of lay blame on, on one um, that have been in terms of Chelsea's obviously having Muslim players and some of the, the leaked quotes we've heard in the past. Those obviously become a problem instantly. And also I look at someone like Woody Johnson and <laughs> I know Twitter is not a good barometer, but just go on any of his tweets and it's New York Jets fans telling him to go basically. Um, nothing really good to say about him from people who know about American sport. And it's the same with the Chicago Cubs, to be honest. Chicago-based Chelsea fans have written some really good thought pieces on this. Who obviously watch Chelsea, support Chelsea from their local pubs, but also of course know the Chicago Cubs and what that means and, and that type of ownership. So for me, I... I lean towards Bowley. I'm not going to, it's not about propaganda. I don't think that's a very sensible way to, the only thing I can be certain about is uh, get a share from for Chelsea, Chelsea pitch owners, get on there now, do it, have a stake in the future of Chelsea, um, become a Chelsea Supporters Trust member. I guess read, read as much as you can, um, you know, not, not to sort of insanity at the moment because it is hard to keep your sanity with the amount of information. And as I'm recording this video, it's, it, you know, it feels like so many things are moving quickly and, what what is the future of Chelsea going to look like? It's been difficult to cover the club for Football London, to be honest, because writing about transfers, writing about the future of contracts, you, we we've got no tangible idea of what a new ownership would look like in terms of what where a Chelsea placed on sort of the pecking order in terms of say simple things like transfers, but the in intentions of those owners, what would the, what would the club look like for the next five to ten years, twenty years? These are impossible things to answer. But I do hope that whoever gets it has found it's not just a, a PR thing that actually is a, a tangible effect that revolutionary change can happen at one of the biggest clubs in this country. Um, of course, we all want a, I'm not going to use the word utopia because I don't like that word, a, a nice combination where you get fan involvement in some kind that is tangible. But as the CST, Dan Silver, another guy I've been speaking to this week on, on Carefree Chelsea, you know, not trying to be silly, not saying that they want to go in and, and, and the CST and all of us fans will have a say over who we sign next. They're not silly like that. It's obviously this the, the sale of Chelsea, billions of pounds are being invested here. But it's more about a different kind of ownership or at least the sense that fans do have a say over their club, a little bit more of a share of what the future of the club will look like. And that, and that of course, I think means a lot um, when we need transparency and clarity. As, I, I'm, as I've said a lot over recent weeks when I've been writing articles, when I've been doing these type of videos, I hope that isn't too much of a mess. Those are my thoughts on it. I feel like I should say I don't know what happens next. I don't think any of us do, um, unless you're in the room, unless you're Rain, unless you're one of these people bidding for Chelsea. It's, it's very tough to know. As I say, keep on top of it. Um, on Football London, I think Alan Smith is doing good work. Adam Newson, who's a close friend of mine and colleague, doing good work. All of us at Carefree Chelsea are obviously doing a lot of opinion pieces. Matt Law, I think, has been brilliant throughout this. Nazar Kinsella too. Um, the Athletic, the Lolo guys, Liam Toomey, Simon Johnson, Dominic Firefield. I think Matt Slater as well. Some of the other guys at The Athletic. You know, I think those guys are obviously doing great work as well. So hopefully we can get some clarity. Um, at the dream scenario in terms of when this could be fast-tracked through, because it is, it seems like it's going to be fast-tracked through, at least more so than other ownership and, and takeovers, maybe the Brentford game. Um, and also just... You know, simple things like being able to go to these games because we are at the business end of the season. We want to be able to go and see Chelsea play in a Champions League quarterfinal at the Bernabeu. We want to be able to go and see Chelsea potentially in an FA Cup semi-final if we beat Middlesbrough tomorrow. These are things that matter to supporters and um, hopefully they can be resolved. We can put this mess behind us and Chelsea can look forward under a new ownership and, and hopefully it can be an exciting one those are my thoughts I hope you have a great weekend I'll hopefully be posting a review tomorrow night um fingers crossed another win under Thomas Tuchel that sixth win in a row which is just testament to how well the players and Tuchel are dealing with this situation um and yeah I'll see you again very soon all the best